This case in the media. Even I so. Did. I mean, will you look at this? Well, it's very high profile. My husband is the leading cardiologist. All right, already. Sorry. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Beacon presiding. Let's be clear right now. This is a courtroom, not a circus. Anyone breaking its decorum is going to get spanked by me personally. The clerk will call the case. Number 32859, Commonwealth v. Robert L. Brooks on the felony count of murder in the first degree. Good morning, Your Honor. Alan Shore for the defense. My goodness, what a splendid turnout. We'll waive reading of the charges and enter a plea of not guilty. I'd ask that you release my client on his own recognizance pending trial. My client is a respected doctor. In fact, I'm told he's the top cardiologist. Stuart at Betts, representing the state, Your Honor, good morning. We do not typically afford bail to first-degree murderers. My client has well-established roots in the Boston community. He's certainly not a flight risk. He has no prior criminal record. His being at large poses no real risk to society. I don't know about Mr. Shore, Your Honor, but I think that the rest of the public would consider a murderer, any murderer, especially this murderer, a devious murderer, to be a risk. I'm sorry, did you use the word murderer four or five times in that sentence? I'd hate to misquote you. Mr. Shore, would you like to be disciplined? Given the sophisticated methodology of this murder, making it appear like a heart attack, I'm persuaded that the defendant possesses the requisite craftiness to indeed escape this jurisdiction with little effort if he so chooses. Gee, that sounded impartial. Bail is denied. The defendant shall return to custody. We are adjourned. I'll be back to meet with you shortly. In the meantime, please do not speak to anyone. Well done on bail. He can be a bit chilly at first, but... Should we go and meet him? I'd like to sit with him alone, please. Why? Because I would. I like to get a feel for those I defend. Denny, you need to stop your penis from humming. I know she was afraid of him because she told me so. She was in a very excitable state when she did so. She said, Mom, I'm scared to death of him. Why did your daughter fear the defendant, Mrs. Goulet? She threatened to tell his wife that they had resumed the affair. What else did your daughter tell you? She said, he said, if you do tell her, you will pay for it. Very dramatic. Probably see it on the news. You like being on the news? Oh, you think I enjoy talking about my daughter's murder? Well, I see you a lot on TV. Almost as much as him. Not that much. You're right. Uh, Phyllis. May I call you Phyllis? Uh, when your uh, daughter told you that she feared my client, were you worried? Of course I was. Did you tell anybody? Surely you told somebody. A friend, a relative, a mental health specialist. Objection. Overruled. Phyllis, did you make up this little story? No, I did not. You disgusting person. I don't like being called disgusting. Did you ever call your daughter disgusting? Of course not. I have a copy of a letter here that you wrote to your daughter shortly before her death. The uh, prosecution has the letter and they mistakenly forgot to produce it during discovery oversight. Would you read the highlighted section, please? And don't forget to project. There's a camera back there. Objection. The highlighted section, please. You never call. You're too busy running around with all your married men. You're a disgraceful, disgusting whore. No evidence of anybody else being present in the home except for the victim and the defendant. Sounds like sloppy work for the defendant to leave his prints behind. He didn't, not really. We only found a few old prints here and there. The crime.